Welcome to Killing It. <laughs> All right, everyone. Today's video is going to be a little bit of a different type of video. I wanted to do this earlier in the spring, just never got the time to do it. We got busy farming, got a lot of stuff going on, but we're going to get it done now, and that's go over our main food plots. We're going to take you back there, show you our main food plot behind the house, and go over what we did and what we're going to do to kind of prepare for the fall. Then we're going to jump over to Jason's and see what he's doing to strategize his food plots for the fall. So let's get into it. All right, here we are in the corn that we planted on April the 22nd. Uh, what we did was we rotate crops each year. First year, last year, uh, we had corn on this side, we had beans on this side, so we're rotating to keep a ton of that disease uh, at bay from the previous year's crop. And what we did here is we came in with anhydrous really early, pre-applied it, then came in with 200 pounds of DAP, 200 pounds of potash, um, and blanket spread this whole field. We worked that in with a tiller, worked it twice, came in, planted this corn, put down a residual, and then we waited till the corn plant got to about that V6 stage and came in and we had some escapes of some water hemp and some mare's tails, some cockaburs, and cockaburs is one thing we've really had a struggle with in the, in the years past, and we sprayed a mixture of Liberty and Roundup. And you really gotta be careful with uh, your hybrid of seed corn. Uh, you really gotta pay attention to what's labeled in the bag to spray it. Some, some you can't spray it with Liberty and Roundup. This is a particular hybrid that we can spray with Liberty and Roundup. It's Pioneer's 1164. It's good stock strength. Uh, it's good drought it's a shorter plant so it doesn't need as much water to get that big year because we're back here in the in the middle of the woods we're kind of away from our ponds can't really irrigate it so we left this strip here to the blind as you can see we left about two two rows out and to get access because once all these leaves fall off here of uh, these trees there's a holler on that on that ridge over there and then there's another holler on this ridge over here that they really like to bed in and getting in and out, we come in here um, from the north side of here, getting in and out is really crucial and not getting seen when we go into the blind. So we left two rows out. We'll come in here and spray this down and, and run it down and clean it up. That way we can get in and out of here with good access and don't get seen or, or heard. We've able to get in the blind uh, last year with deer standing in the plot. The only problem is we get caught going up the ladder about halfway up. So other than that, that's pretty much what we did for the corn this year and uh, the beans we just planted five days ago on the is May 26th and they're just starting to come up uh, as you can see we'll come over here and look down some of the rows they're coming up Jason sprayed a residual on them after we planted them we worked in all that fertilizer that I was talking about that we blanket spread before over this whole plot and so the fertilizer was there and we just needed uh, needed to get some rain here to help the beans start pushing through the rest of them that haven't come up. I really wanted to wait uh, until we double cropped the wheat. We got wheat on both sides of both sides of the field and, and it's kind of crucial sometimes uh, people with the smaller food plots, they need to really pay attention to the fields that are surrounding them, the big ag fields that are surrounding them. That helps with some of that deer pressure. If you come in here and you plant uh, a little bitty bean plot and you got big ag fields of of corn all the way around, you're the only bean plot that's gonna be in the area and they're really gonna ham hammer those beans and, and you're really gonna have a lot of issues with that. But their extended forecast really wasn't looking good for rain. Dad decided that he wanted to get the beans in the ground. So hopefully they don't get hammered too, too bad. We put the rate really high, so we'll have a little bit of extra beans. But if we don't get any rain, none of that's really gonna matter. So he was worried about getting the drill into the ground after we cut the weed if it was too hard we weren't getting any rain so we went ahead and planted the beans and we'll see how well it turns out all right so we will probably have some escapes out here uh, we had a really bad issues with cockaburs and what we're going to do since after we put the residual down the escapes we're going to come back with the liberty and roundup mix again just like the, we did with the corn and spray over the top to kill the rest of those this is an enlist bean that we planted here and uh, Hopefully it does some good. We got maybe like a 35% chance of rain over the next 10 days. So 
really hoping we get a rain out here. It's it's really dry as you can tell. There ain't much moisture under the under the soil to help these beans get out. Even though it's really dry right now, these beans we planted them in like perfect conditions. The, it was really fine. We locked in that moisture. There was a lot of moisture when we planted them. They came up, I mean, absolutely perfect. We got a really good stand here. Got a lot of beans, because I know this is gonna be the only bean source for a while till the double crops get in, but beans look fantastic. We do definitely gonna need a rain here with 90 degree temperatures coming up here. And uh, no rain in the near forecast, but they do look good right now. So we left a little bit of a strip over here by the wheat and this wheat is where that I had the fall plot last year. And as you can see, there's a little gap that it shoots through this fence row right here. Those deer like to like to run that gap quite a bit and go into that main ag field, and which is gonna be double crop beans. So they're gonna be pretty tender beans. And I think they're gonna be using that pretty hard, that gap. Uh, but we left a little bit of a strip on this side of the wheat uh, for a fall plot where uh, the, still don't really know what we're gonna use. Probably a little bit of a chicory mix. Uh, maybe throw some beans in there. I got a stand that's just inside that cedar tree uh, to the right. And so the gap is like a 15 yard shot where they shoot through that gap. They have a scrape on that white oak tree that hangs pretty low that they hit. And I think where I put the stands like 25 yards from that scrape. So hopefully this fall plot will do us some good if we can get some rain for that too. But that's my plan for the fall plot on that side. Maybe throw a little bit of weed up here uh, broadcast some wheat and the beans up here by the blinds to give them some greens too. Um, we'll just see when the time comes uh, what we feel like doing. But jury's still out on that. Hopefully this will be the place where we get a shot at half rack this year. Oh, look at this. You can see where the anhydrous stop uh, at the end of the boom. Come over here. Come get this. Oh, so if you look here, we got really green corn right here and these last two rows are like a lighter green. That's where the anhydrous boom didn't get over far enough. So you got really dark corn right here and you got obviously lighter corn which is lacking nitrogen. And, and that really shows you right here how important your nitrogen is um, on your corn crop um, right down to the row. You got really good corn on the right and you got some that's gonna struggle a little bit and that'll continue to struggle through the rest of this year. Um, through the growing season, um, not, not having as much nitrogen as this side of this corn. So it's kind of neat that you can really see the difference in, in color of the corn. If you see some of these white spots on those leaves, it's called holcus spot. There's nothing you can really do uh, for holcus spot. It kind of resembles a little bit of a chemical drift, but <clears throat> there wasn't any other chemicals around. There's no neighboring fields that could have got drifted to. So, 100% hulk spot, but there's really nothing you can do about it. All right, let's get out of here before we scare my deer off. All right, guys, we're out here today. This is uh, my home farm behind my house where I took my uh, biggest buck of my life last year. Out here just kind of looking at stuff, kind of doing an update on the food plots and how things are progressing. This, this area here, was all burnt off in March. It's a prairie grass mix. I, I planted prairie grass in there probably six, seven years ago. I rotate every two years. I don't burn everything off. I just burn half. I have a fire break in. And uh, you can always tell every year what's been burnt off. It comes back in much thicker. And it looks really good right now. Of course, right now we're really dry. We need some rain. That stuff usually get about six, six seven foot tall and makes good good bedding, good habitat. I'm sure there's some fawns out there somewhere. But uh, anyway, we're, uh, the rest of this plot here around the border, this is a uh, forage sorghum. I put on about 150 units of uh, nitrogen. I like using anhydrous, it stays in the ground better. I like it better than urea. I had to replant it, just been replanted not that long ago. It's not very big. Uh, the chemical I use on it was kind of, we got a big grain on it right after we planted it and it was not looking real good. It was kind of purple and looked like it was about dead. And So I ripped it out and redone it. Just barely had enough moisture to get it a stand, but it's coming in nice. The thing about this is it's like you have a food plot border, but basically it's like a eight foot tall Milo. So you got 
a border with food. The birds are just go crazy over this stuff and the deer do as well. And the best part about this is the deer do not mess with any milo or sorghum products until the heads start to turn brown, which it's reached its maturity. So this is looking pretty good. I got a little border of beans here. Uh, I rotate my corn and beans every year, just like we do farming. That way you utilize the nitrogen that the beans put in the ground. Saves you a little money. I put uh, dry fertilizer on all my acres. I use, I just fertilize my corn ground each year. I don't fertilize the bean ground. Uh, I run 200 pounds of DAP, 200 pounds of potash. And the corn ground gets another 150 units of anhydrous and I do that pre-plant. A lot of chemical involved. Uh, I don't no-till anything. Everything is tilled to kill the weeds initially. I put pre-emergent chemical down for the beans and the corn both to kind of help the weed control. And then I come back in post to kind of help kind of clean everything up. Bean and corn are both are Liberty Link. Uh, the corn is Liberty and Roundup. Um, I use over the top, I don't really use Liberty. I kind of save that on the corn. There's other things you can use to kill your water hemp, as long as it's not really big in corn. And you can scan down my corn rows, and I posted it. I spray everything with a foiler sprayer. So about the time the corn gets big enough where it's getting close to breaking off the foiler, that's when I spray it. And I got a little spray carry over my beans there where it smoked them, but. Uh, Corn looks really clean right now, and uh, of course you can see the deer been in it pulling the tops out again. So I went kind of heavy on the corn this year, just because of the fact that last year I was wiped out of corn really early in the season and had a pretty good growing year. So this is a strip of wheat. Um, the deer were already in it. Uh, I kind of stumbled on this doing my dove plots. I always left a strip of wheat for. Uh, for the doves to mow down and burn and if I plant a little strip the deer would just have it annihilated so now I continue to raise wheat just for the plots in the fall you plant in the fall it's good all winter this winter is probably the best winter I've ever seen for deer using wheat all winter long because it really never went into dormancy it was really green so we put always keep a block of wheat <laughs> The deer will eat that off and they'll burn that about the end of July and then come in and no-till beans and that hopefully have some moisture in that ground by then. But that's my buck I shot last year, that's what he was in was the late planted beans even though they was hit by frost. They still had enough green underneath to keep them interested. This border goes all the way around this plot to kind of help me use my access getting in and out and then uh, I'll have a trail, got their border, plot border down on that end too, to kind of have the deer come in and out where you want them to. And I had a corner, a trail last year, and that's where the buck was using, bedding in that prairie grass, coming out that corner. So I use a screen to kind of help the deer kind of funnel them where you want them to come into the plot. But we got more beans and more corn down on this end of the plot. Really not sure what the total acres here is of this plot, but this is mainly my, I guess, destination plot, if you want to call it that. You can see out here in this plot here where I sprayed the beans of Liberty to kind of clean up the cockabur. It's pretty much the only weed I've had to kill out here in this plot. But the browse pressure has been pretty, pretty intense. I always plant my beans double the rate we would in a farm field. I use about 150 pounds an acre and I, I have a great plane to drill and I drill drill the beans in and it seems like with that you usually end up having enough beans left. To, they look kind of spindly right now but if they get bigger they'll be thick enough it'll be a full canopy and they'll be just fine hopefully. That's one thing I cannot figure out. See that corn right there? You plant Roundup Liberty corn and yet it's not Liberty. Of Liberty, that's Liberty kill. See how it killed them? I don't know why that gene's not passed down. There you go. I just sprayed these. Here's the here's the dead cockaburs. 
that we sprayed. I just sprayed this like a week ago. It hasn't had any rain. And that's what a little cockapur looks like when it first comes up. Somehow they're still germinating. So this will definitely have to be sprayed again as small as these beans are. All right, this is on the south end of the plot. Didn't really have, this all used to be overgrown pasture here. There's fences through here and I cleaned everything out and made this plot to what it is today. And it turned out really well. We put this pond in here two summers ago. The pond don't look very big, but it's really deep. So if I wanted to pump a little water here on this south alpha, I could. Um, it's getting close to that point. Uh, we got rain coming in, hopefully. Had a little chance today, but it didn't amount to much. Maybe get more over the weekend. If not, I'm gonna at least try to water this alfalfa here one time. By putting this pond in, we just kind of funnel the deer. We come right through here, between here and the blind, you got a chip shot. And uh, all that's overgrown pasture back there. This timber's been logged about 10 years ago. Really good bedding. Keeps the deer close to the food as possible. Gives you more chance to see the deer in daylight. So I like having the corn and beans here for the rotation. You get a better, anytime you have corn and beans, you're making an edge with the corn. And I use the corn to kind of, almost kind of like a wall to make the, kind of have the deer come around where you want them. Right here in this area, uh, two seasons ago, my son and I doubled here about 15 minutes apart. Really, really good bucks. His biggest buck of his life. and. Probably one of the oldest bucks I ever killed. Not a high scoring deer, but he was a trophy to me. That hunt will be hard to top. So. But this alfalfa, you can see the browse pressure here. It's it's all it's all topped off. I mean everything looks like it's been tops been knocked off the weed here. I'm gonna probably gonna come in here, this little patch, uh, not really big enough to get any hay equipment in to mess with, so I just usually mow this off with my zero turn. And the thing about that is you wanna blow all the trash off the plot because you'll smother out the alfalfa and then once it starts to grow up again i'll this is roundup ready i'll come in here and spray it with roundup to, this really ain't too weedy here but you get over there it's a little got some weeds coming in it so try to keep it clean but uh, yeah this alfalfa it takes a lot of water it's really really dry but it does better in dry conditions than a lot of crops because that's such a deep deep root system so this is my biggest uh, block of alfalfa that I have. It's probably a little over an acre. I had the neighbor come in and cut this and rake it up and get it bailed up last night. So I'm gonna, it was past its prime. It's been pretty dry and the deer had to just trample down. It got real tall and it was kind of laying down. That's why it didn't cut very good. Um, while the stem's still sticking up, I'm gonna come in here with my zero turn and mow it down short. That way it'll come back a little bit nicer. Um, alfalfa is not for everybody. I mean, it's a high reward if you get everything right, for, uh, but it's expensive. Uh, it takes a lot of fertilizer. Your pH has to be up, a lot of potash. Um, this is Roundup Ready variety, which helps with the weed control. But if you have water hemp, it still does not. Uh, Roundup, as everybody knows, does not uh, kill water hemp. So. Other than grass and other weeds, everything else that works pretty decent on still in our area. You get later on in the summer and you get some timely rains and you mow this off and get it about six inches tall and the, there's nothing the deer really like better probably other than a, a small bean that's just come out of the ground. So last year, uh, Big Brow was using this alfalfa regularly. Um, and then where this corn is here, this is where I went in and uh, planted beans and the uh, wheat late beans where this corn patch is here he come in come in from the north for whatever reason that night we had him pattern coming in from the south using but he definitely used my cut and my plot screen on both ends he came in on the cut on that side and he was using the cut over here on this far corner but uh, this alfalfa has uh, been here for five years so treated right and taken care of you can it's expensive to plant. Uh, the Roundup stuff is about 8.50 a pound, and uh, 25 pound seeding rate per acre. But the highlight is you don't have to plant it every year. It comes back, and also it greens up 
just as quick, if not a little faster than your clovers do. So it's the first attraction for a green food source. After the first cutting, the deer will pre-keep it down pretty close where I'll never have to have it cut off again. Maybe top it with a lawnmower a time or two, but it'll be in pretty good shape. Now if we just get some rain to get it growing again. But you can see it's starting to come, even as dry as it is, it's starting to come back a little bit with some nice green, lush growth. For early season, it's uh, that early October is always a good window if you get the right kind of weather. Last year, we had really good luck using the trailer blinds, and uh, I only had one of them on a trailer last year, and Brandon had two on a trailer, and and uh, I killed both my bucks last year out of the trailer blinds, and so this winter I built three more, bought three trailers, put them on a trailer for hunting. Early season is nice is to kind of move them around as where the hot spots are in the plot. I plan on having a blind over here in that plot screen. The plot screen's on the far east end of the plot. So I can come in, I got a mode path to the prairie grass, come in the back door in any kind of west wind, southwest, northwest, I'm good to hunt on this side of the plot. I don't have to worry about anything getting downwind. I got them beans out front and this alfalfa here. And then I'll, over here, I mean, it could, most of the time the deer bed over here. So if I have some late beans, get us them standing in that wheat, that might be a good draw. And you know, that's the best part about the trailer blinds. You know, you can go in, move them that day and it doesn't matter. Once a deer accept a blind in a plot, I mean, it's, it's a uh, pretty easy compared to a permanent blind. So, I mean, Brandon and I done that last year, moved a blind in middle of the day and, uh, had bucks all over us that evening. Never even looked at the blind. So once that blind is there, they don't care. They accept it, move it, do whatever you want to, to put you close as the deer as possible. So anyway, that's about it for here. All right, thank you for watching today's video. Hopefully that answers some questions on how we do all of our food plots. If you haven't heard, Jason and I's hunts from last fall are on Dream Season Live on Drury Outdoors YouTube channel. And then here in a couple of weeks on the Outdoor channel, they're air on Bow Madness. So make sure you go check some of those hunts out. They're really good and we'll catch you in the next one.